Tonight on KBR News, protests erupt in response to President Trump's executive order, a community comes together to rebuild a mosque burnt in Victoria, and Texans rally for life at the state capitol. You're watching KBR News, your leader for live local UT coverage. Broadcasting live from the Texas Student Television Studios at the University of Texas, you're watching KBR News at 9. Austin's leader for live local UT coverage. Your news starts right now. Good evening and welcome back to KBR News. For Monday, January 30th, I'm Ashley Tull. And I'm Brianna Rodriguez. Thank you for joining. Over the weekend, President Trump signed an executive order to suspend refugees from entering the country. This affects seven majority Muslim countries, including Iran, Syria, and Yemen, for at least the next 90 days. Immediately after the order was signed, a number of refugees and residents were detained at airports. This caused nationwide protests, including one at the Austin Bergstrom International Airport and another at Houston's Bush Airport. UT is home to 110 faculty members and students from the seven affected countries. In an email to the UT community, President Finvez emphasized the perspective and diversity these individuals bring to the university. Absolutely, Brianna, and President Finvez encouraged these same individuals to refrain from international travel. But this executive order is only one of many that the Trump administration enacted throughout the week. That's right, Ashley. In addition, Trump called for a reversal of President Obama's order to halt Dakota Access Pipeline construction. If Congress approves this executive order, the pipe will run through the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe in North Dakota. But President Trump moved beyond domestic policy during his first week in office and targeted key promises he made regarding international policy. Trump ended the Trans-Pacific Partnership, an international trade deal prioritized by the Obama administration. This was a bipartisan trade policy between 12 Asian nations and the U.S. Trump insists the moves will keep jobs in the United States. However, critics such as John McCain believe this may prompt China to retaliate against America's economy. And President Trump fulfilled one of his biggest campaign promises by ordering the construction of a southern border wall between Mexico and America. Mexico continues to stand on their decision to not pay for the cost of the wall, which is estimated to be between 12 and 15 million dollars. This order prompted Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto to cancel his meeting with Trump. The Islamic Center of Victoria caught fire early Saturday morning, but its cause is still unknown. Islamic Center President Shahid Hashmi said authorities told him it was too early to speculate about the cause of the fire. The congregation has support and has already received offers of temporary quarters for worship. The blaze was put down after four hours and no injuries were reported. A GoFundMe page raised over $900,000 in one day to rebuild the mosque. It's been 44 years since the U.S. Supreme Court legalized abortion. People in Austin gathered at the Capitol to rally against this decision. We went out to see what it meant for protesters to have their voices heard at the march. Just one day after the March for Life in Washington, thousands gathered at the Texas State Capitol on Saturday for their own Rally for Life. This particular Rally for Life comes just six days after the 44th anniversary of Roe v. Wade, the Supreme Court decision to legalize abortion in all 50 states. Men and women joined to speak on their stances on pro-life and the defunding of Planned Parenthood. Many protesters held signs or recounted by word of mouth their experiences and beliefs. Dora Esparza holds a sign explaining her story as she tells us why she thinks this rally is important. I think a well-roundedness of everything um, inspired people to stand up. Um, educate people to know that life does begin at conception and educate people to know that you know a life is not just taken but a woman's life is destroyed. Just last week President Trump reinstated the global gag policy which disallows U.S. funded groups around the world from discussing abortion which many pro-life protesters deemed a small victory. I'm glad to see people standing up because we all need to be heard. This is just one of the president's plans to change abortion policy. President Trump discussed in his first interview after election that he wants to appoint pro-life judges with the goal of overturning Roe v. Wade. Amidst worry for what the future holds, some just want things to turn out optimistically. God willing, maybe it'll lead to a mass of prayer. Prayer can fix everything.
Rihanna Rodriguez, KBR News. Shortly after being sworn in, new Travis County Sheriff Sally Hernandez announced new policies to prohibit officials from asking about an inmate's immigration status. This led to a political dispute between the sheriff's office and Governor Greg Abbott. He threatened to cut $1.8 million in federal funding to Travis County. He also stated he will attempt to remove Sheriff Hernandez from office, calling her actions reckless. However, if an inmate is suspected of serious crimes, such as capital murder, Sheriff Hernandez said her department will comply with immigration status requests. This Thursday, the Austin City Council will vote on a $1.9 million grant to increase pedestrian safety in the city. In the past two years, almost 60 people experienced fatal accidents while crossing the street. The transportation grant aims to have zero pedestrian auto accidents. Currently, the city plans to install more countdown timers at busy intersections. However, city officials say a year of study must be required to determine the best method of accident prevention before moving forward. We'll have more news after the break. Coming up next, students give their perspective on the Dean Keaton construction. And UT students celebrate the Lunar New Year. Stay tuned for more KVR News. Have a news tip or story idea? Call the KVR News tip line 475-8181. An estimated 300,000 victims of sex trafficking reside in Texas, according to a recent study conducted by UT School of Social Work. Approximately 79,000 of these victims are minors. An additional 234,000 individuals are victims of labor trafficking. To reach this estimate, researchers conducted interviews and focus groups with professionals at social service agencies and trafficking victims. CEO and President of, and President of Allies Against Slavery, John Nim, said the report will act as a significant resource to help in human trafficking. Construction along Dean Keaton and Widest Avenue continues well into the spring semester. You can see here how the construction blocks off access to a sidewalk near the Moody College of Communication. As a result, people near this area must walk on the street. Students explain how the construction affects their daily commute to class. Well, like I've seen people almost hit pedestrians, which is, uh, you know, that's not right. I think it's definitely a safety hazard. They um, kind of blocked off the sideway on widest coming up to the communication school, so you have to be careful and look out for cars before you cross. I think they probably did announce it, but I think they should have made that a little bit more clear. They should maybe put more signs saying, like, don't walk here, um, maybe being a little bit more transparent. It has made me later to class because I'll find routes where I can avoid that, and I'll go around the building, like, a five minute longer way, I'll be late to class. So I definitely think it's a safety risk and it's just an inconvenience for all the UT students and um, just a big liability for UT. The city of Austin announced a new art funding initiative called Culture Alive. This initiative intends to promote more diverse artwork from underrepresented communities. Culture Alive will support a variety of art expressions and traditions from African American, Latino, Asian, and Native American communities to raise awareness about different art forms. Applicants to the initiative can receive awards up to $5,000. The city hopes an increased amount of diversity in art will help to enrich the Austin community. The Dell Medical School received a $1 million donation from the University Federal Credit Union to help improve health of Central Texans. This grant will save the Dell School about $250,000 in building expenses for the next five years. In addition, this grant creates three full-ride scholarships for students from underrepresented communities. Additional expenses will support community health initiatives led by the school's Department of Population Health. People across the globe continue to welcome the Lunar New Year, an East Asian tradition. Each year, the lunar calendar marks um, the year with an animal from the Chinese zodiac. 2017 falls under the year of the rooster. UT events and entertainment hosted a celebration on campus, including traditional Asian crafts, games, and food. Asian interest organizations table at the event. According to an event organizer, Hugh Huynh, approximately 900 people attended the event, which aims to share authentic Asian culture with the UT community. For me, it's uh, getting together with family and spending time, uh, just eating good food, you know, playing games, just 
it's good family time. Especially since UT is such a diverse community, to, for people to get to know about other other cultures as well, and maybe if they share some similarities or aspects, like me personally, in my culture, we go by the lunar calendar. Although we don't celebrate it, but we go with it. So that was something I learned today. Ashley, this Texas weather just can't seem to make up its mind. One day I'm in shorts and the next day I'm in a sweater. Personally, I'm already way over the winter weather. Spring really couldn't come fast enough. Well, our Sean Dolan is live in the weather studio to let us know what to expect during the week. Sean? Thanks, Brianna and Ashley. It looks like we're going to be starting this week with cool mornings and warm afternoons. Stay tuned for this week's weather forecast after the break. Have a news tip or story idea? Call the KBR News Tip Line, 475-8181. Well, it looks like the weather is going to be a bit of a challenge this week with differences in temps during the days and nights. Days will be hot and the nights are going to be quite cooler, so make sure you bring a jacket when you go out for your late night trips to the PCL. Today we reached a sunny high of 76 degrees. And tonight we're going to go down to about 45 degrees. Tuesday we'll get up to about 76 again, and then Tuesday night's going to be in the low 50s. Wednesday we'll get up to the high 70s with a little bit of cloud cover and a light breeze out to the south. Wednesday night you might be able to catch the crescent moon with temps getting down to the low 50s, but with a clear sky. Thursday is going to be a bit cooler in the low 70s with a night low in the mid 50s. Friday we're going to see a few clouds in the sky and a chance of rain, temps being in the upper 60s. We'll finish Friday in the mid-50s. Going into the weekend, though, it looks like we'll have some clouds in the sky, if not some rain throughout Saturday and Sunday. Saturday, we'll see a high of 70 and a low in the lower 50s. And we're going to end the weekend with a cool Sunday in the mid-60s. Have a great week, Longhorns. Live in the Weather Center, Sean Dolan. Thanks, Sean. We'll be back with your college press box's Luke Hendry after the break. Watching KBR News at 9. Your campus, your news. Welcome back to KBR News. The Texas men's basketball team matched up with the Georgia Bulldogs as part of the SEC Big 12 Challenge on Saturday. Texas jumped out to a nine point advantage at half, but Georgia clawed their way back into the game late. Texas forward Jared Allen's jump hook at the buzzer rimmed out and the Bulldogs defeated the Longhorns 59-57. to Texas falls to 8-13 on the season and will host Texas Tech right here in Austin on Wednesday. The Texas women's basketball team was also in action over the weekend. The 12th ranked Longhorns defeated West Virginia 69-54. to The defensive contest improves Texas to 16-4 on the season and marks their 14th straight victory. The Longhorns will continue their Big 12 play against Oklahoma State on Wednesday. And now we're going to turn to the recent sexual assault allegations against Baylor University football players. Luke, can you tell us a little bit more about that? A Virginia woman ended up uh, filing a lawsuit against two Baylor uh, football players alleging that she was sexually assaulted back in 2013. Now, Baylor ended up firing their president, athletic director, and head coach last year after an independent investigation was done regarding the sexual assaults of the Baylor football team. But these new allegations are beginning to surface and KVR News will follow the legal proceedings of this lawsuit and the ones to follow. We absolutely will, and thank you so much for joining us, Luke. Now let's see what's been happening in Hollywood this week. Claudia? Executive orders affect this year's Oscars, A Dog's Purpose wags off controversy, and Camila Cabello's first solo single, Leaked. We have all this coming up after the break. Have a news tip or story idea? Call the KBR News Tip Line, 475-8181. Oscar-nominated director Asghar Farhadi cancels plans to attend the 2017 Academy Awards following President Trump's controversial travel ban. 
Trump signed an executive order banning people from seven different countries for 90 days. Fahardi, a native Iranian, is nominated for his movie, The Salesman. Fahardi released a statement saying he planned to attend the show up until Trump's announcement. The executive order blocks entry of all refugees for 120 days and bans Syrian refugees forever. Fahardi received an Oscar in 2012 for The Separation, the first Iranian movie to win Best Foreign Language Film. A Dog's Purpose debuts at the top of the box office after gaining attention for their possible mistreatment of dogs. TMZ released a video of a German Shepherd named Hercules, the dog pictured on the movie poster, being mishandled and forced into a pool for a scene. The video went viral causing animal rights group PETA to call for a boycott of the film. The movie's producer Gavin Pallone said that the video did not paint a complete picture and PETA is distorting the truth. Despite allegations, the film continued to earn $18.4 million its opening weekend, second only to the psycho-thriller Split. Leak alert! Camila Cabello's first solo single leaked online this week. The former Fifth Harmony member left the group in December of last year to pursue her solo career. Cabello promoted the single on social media throughout the month of January, with the intention of releasing it in early 2017. The song features producer Cashmere Cat and has elements of R&B and pop. Fifth Harmony announced the news of Cabello leaving the group on Twitter after several conversations with the other members. We're looking forward to both of their music in the upcoming months. Thanks, Claudia, and thank you for tuning in to our first episode of the semester. TSTV will be hosting its general meeting this Thursday at 7.30 in Burdine 106. Come on out if you're interested in joining the news department. Be sure to follow us for news updates throughout the week. You can follow us on Twitter at KBR News or like us on Facebook. I'm Brianna Rodriguez. And I'm Ashley Tull. Stay tuned for College Press Box up next on Texas Student Television. Have a great week.